October 1st. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. Let your life be a clear reflection of the glory of the Redeemer. The saints of God are the only witnesses to this glory, the only reflectors the Lord has in this dark and Christ-denying world. Holiness, springing from the fount of the Spirit's indwelling grace, cherished and matured by close views of the cross, and imparting a character of sanctity of beauty to every act of your life, will be the highest testimony as you bear to the Redeemer's glory. That glory is entrusted to your hands. It is committed to your guardianship. Seeing then that it is so, what manner of people ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? How exact in principles and upright in conduct, how watchful over temper, and how vigilant were most assailed, how broad awake to the wiles of the devil, and how sleepless against the encroachments of sin. How strict in all transactions with the world, and how tender, charitable, meek, and forgiving in all our conduct with the saints. Alas, we are at best but dim reflectors of this great glory of our Lord. We are unworthy and unfaithful depositories of so rich a treasure. How much of clinging infirmity or unmortified sin, of carelessness of spirit, of unsanctified temper, of tampering with temptation, of a lack of strict integrity or uprightness, dims our light, neutralizes our testimony for God, and weakens, if not entirely destroys, our moral influence. We are not more eminently useful because we are not more eminently holy. We bring so little glory to Christ because we seek so much our own. We reflect so faint and flickering a beam because our posture is so seldom that of the apocalyptic angel standing in the sun. We realize so imperfectly our oneness with and standing in Christ, and this will ever foster a feeble, fruitless, and drooping profession of Christianity. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you, except you abide in me. Oh, to know more of this abiding in Christ, See how Jesus invites his saints to it. Are they fallen? He bids them take hold of his strength. Are they burdened? He bids them cast that burden on his arm. Are they wearied? He bids them recline on him for rest. Does the world persecute them? Do the daughters of Jerusalem smite them? Does the watchman treat them unkindly? He bids them take refuge within the hallowed sanctity of his own pierced and loving heart. Do they need grace? He bids them sink their empty vessel beneath the depths of his ocean fullness and draw freely more grace. Whatever corruptions distress them, whatever temptations assail them, whatever adversity grieves them, whatever cloud darkens them, whatever necessity pressures upon them, as a watchful shepherd, as a tender brother, as a faithful friend, as a great high priest, he bids his saints draw near and repose in his love. Oh, he has a capacious bosom. There is room. There is a chamber in that heart for you, my Christian reader. Do not think your lot is desolate, lonely, and friendless. Do not think that all have forsaken you, and that in sadness and in solitude you are treading your way through an intricate desert. There is one that loves you that thinks of you, that has his eye upon you, and is at this moment guiding, upholding, and caring for you. That one is Jesus. Oh, that you could but look into his heart and see how he loves you. Oh, that you could but hear him say so gently, so earnestly, abide in my love. Cheer up, you are in Christ's heart, and Christ is in your heart. You are not alone. Your God and your Father is with you. Your shepherd guides you. The Comforter spreads around you his wings, and heaven is bright before you. Soon you will be there. The pilgrim will repose his weary limbs. The voyager will be moored in his harbor of rest. The warrior 
will put off his armor and shout his song of triumph. Then look up. Christ is your. God is your. Heaven is your. If God is for you, who can be against you? And if you find disappointment in created good, it will but endear Jesus. If you know more of the inward plague, it will but drive you to the atoning blood. If you have storms and tempests, they will but shorten the voyage and waft you the quicker to glory.